Hello everyone, uh, Emma Newman is here and another video from my video course Piano Well. Let's talk about correct way of practicing. There's a very simple test how you can check if you practice in the right way. If you've been playing piano over 10 years, it shouldn't take for you uh, more than 2-3 weeks to prepare a concert piece. So if you've been practicing the piece over 2-3 months and still cannot finish it, that really means you need to rethink the way you practice. So every time we open a new piece, we always have a goal. The goal is simple, to memorize a piece, to play it fast enough and then musically and technically free, with good tone, with good feelings, so all good. And the plan we use is also pretty much simple. Um, we practice the piece, we're trying to memorize it while catching some nuances in the score that we can see. And while you know listening to some great pianist performance, uh, catching their own ideas uh, about music, their own interpretations in the sense of tone, dynamics, phrasing, feelings, tempo. And then we bring it to our professor so he could give us some very helpful advices about how to overcome difficult fragments in the piece and uh, how to you know, show us his own ideas, his own interpretation of the piece. So we might copy this. Well, it's all good except it doesn't really help us to finish the piece during two or three weeks and play it with our own interpretation uh, and technically free. <laughs> so we all should agree on that. So what we need to do is to start the plan from the opposite way. Uh, we need to jump into the musical ideas of the piece as soon as we open the score in the very first time. Um, so we need to imagine sounds, play it with smart movements, and then just practice it, practice it, practice it until we get a good result. And then just show us to our professor to share our own ideas, to share our art with him, not to, you know, copy his ideas. Now, let me explain why you need to start with correct tone production. You see, when you have sound imagination, when you have musical imagination, then you will start making correct movements right away. And that will actually benefit you a lot in the technical way. And you wouldn't have to spend um, later like months to change your movements when you want to change your musical ideas. So from the very first touch, from the very first note, when we play in a very slow tempo, <laughs> we make absolutely correct smart movements that convey our musical ideas. We wouldn't change anything uh, later on, we just practice and practice and practice till we can memorize these movements and play it fast enough. Well, the problem with the wrong movements, the movements that are not following the musical ideas from the beginning, that those movements will never become comfortable for us, no matter how much we practice the piece. And there will be always the sensation of clumsiness in our hands, and um, that will bring tension to our body and stiffness to our wrist, and will always distract us from the musical and spiritual world of our performance. So which movements are the right movements, the movements that let us play with freedom and easiness from the very first day of practicing? Well, those who are aligned with the musical pattern, with the notes pattern that are written in the score. Um, if we're playing one position, then if the note is written higher than previous note, we measure it to the right and we move our wrist to the right. If the note is lower than previous, then our wrist goes to the left together with our imagination. And if we talk about large leaps or even small shifts positions like in arpeggios then, well, we're gonna use our elbow to prepare position first, to move elbow first, and then to move the whole arm. So 
that all will benefit us a lot when we need to play in the fast tempos. And of course all these movements will be changed, become much smaller, almost invisible when we start playing faster and more free. Like I said many many times, when I perform you can never tell which movements I'm making because it's, it's invisible for naked eyes. But yet all the movements, all the sensations of movements are inside my muscles and I can feel them very very well. And now I'm going to tell you the secret of all the movements. Even the best smart movements can never benefit you unless they can be musical idea. Um, what I mean is that when we move our hand we can control the muscle movements, but we cannot control the feeling and sensations while we're making these movements. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna give you an example so you understand better what I mean. We can say the same phrase um, and move our tongue and mouth the same way, but we can do it with different emotional content. And the same phrase would be pronounced differently. For example, I can say very energetically, I'm happy. And then I can say very peaceful and calm. I'm happy. So <laughs> this is a different of sensations that I'm talking about while making the same movements. And like I said, we should not only control uh, muscle movements, but also the sensations while we're making this movement. That's why existing way of teaching, uh, where teacher you know show uh, his way of playing, his technique, his method that he used to play the piece technically easier and musically better uh, almost never works with students because what would students do, they would just take what they can see, the, his, the professor's movement and they would play the same with the same movements but with absolutely different uh, emotional content so <laughs> they would play absolutely the same things, with the same movements, with different sensations. And as a result, teachers playing is masterful and students playing is pathetic. <laughs> so we all need to control these sensations while playing and we can only do this through sound imagination. And that's why if I play, for example, the same interval and just make movements automatically, that will never work. That will never help me to play technically easier, because eventually the tension inside the muscles would be remained. And, um, well, when I imagine the sound, before and while playing, releases all my muscles right away, I don't know how it works, but this imaginary sound just flows through my muscles, releasing any tension. So this is the way how you achieve um, free and uh, very easy technique. And those um, correct sensations in the muscles that I'm talking about uh, not only sound imagination, but also breathing technique when we can breathe through the sound, breathe through the interval and this technique we call intonation and weight and uh, about this you can find in my lesson called intonation and weight in my videos and uh, when, when you have this basic of correct movements, sound imagination, uh, intonation, you have singing while playing, then uh, what what you to, what you do is just you add some more and more layers, like you add uh, dynamics and voicing and harmony. If we talk about sound imagination, if we talk about intonation, it would be musical speech, phrasing, emotional image, form of the music, time, and uh, all of this you express through the same uh, movements that you made in the very first day when you were analyzing a new piece. So you can imagine how those movements would be transformed 
while conveying all these musical aspects of the piece. So the bottom line is that correct practicing should start with uh, smart movements and imagination of every single note, nuance and the phrase that is written on the score. And from the very first days there should be uh, smart, efficient movements with good sensations and then you simply uh, repeat them many many times uh, as much as it takes to just memorize them and play it faster and that doesn't take like months to make just a few weeks <laughs> so one more time those endless time that students uh, take to finish the piece is only the result of uh, an attempt to re really learn the fix row movements that students made in the very first place and if you are tired and get a little bit disappointed about your own practicing, then welcome to my class and uh, this piano training program. Everyone takes it, it's all for free and you can join my students and all the materials, all the books are also for free. <laughs> I'm just doing it because I love it. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye.